Look at this. It's about to come up. There it is. Oh, hey, look, look at that. Eat that one instead. Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath and it's Tips and Tricks Thursday. In this episode, I'm gonna go over with you what I've been doing over the past couple of weeks to catch mutton snapper. I'm gonna go over the rig I use, the rod and reel I use, how I store my rig so that it's still good for future use. I'm gonna go over the bait, the technique, the spots, and a few other things that'll up your game if you're looking to target mutton snapper. Before we get into this though, do us a favor. Hit the subscribe button, give this video a like, and leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. All right, everybody. You know what time it is. Let's do this. Okay, so we have to start out by saying mutton snapper are like structure-oriented fish. If you don't find structure on the bottom, you're probably most likely not going to find them. They hang out on wrecks. They hang out on reefs. What I've found over the years of fishing for them is the deeper you go, the bigger they get. So if you're fishing, you know, in uh, 30 to 50 feet, your mutton snapper are going to be barely legal, which is 18 inches, if not, you know, short. Deeper you go on the deep wrecks, the bigger they get. Mutton snapper are very skittish fish. They do not like terminal tackle. So if you've got a leader on your setup that is three to four feet long they're most likely going to see your sinker bouncing around if you've got one and it it's going to scare them off and you're going to end up getting some bottom feeders or yellow tails or something along that nature which might not necessarily be your target mutton snapper the method that i use when i'm going targeting mutton snapper is i use a conventional reel i've been going rather on on rather deep wrecks between 160 and 135 feet. So I've been putting an ounce and a half egg sinker on it with a little barrel swivel. Then that's the basis of it. The next thing I do is I'm putting a 15 to 20 foot leader on it. That keeps my terminal tackle way away from my hook. So when my sinker hits the bottom of the floor, it's not going to you know, make a distraction or, or spook the fish should they do it. Also, my sinker will come down and my bait will sort of flow back, which gives it a more natural look also, which is why you want this long leader. I use Seaguar Red Label. This is a 20 pound fluorocarbon, 20 pound test fluorocarbon. Um, you can use whatever brand name you want this i'm just particular to this it's a little bit uh, more pliable it's not stiff fluorocarbon tends to be stiff this is the one i find that works the best for me all right so i'm gonna go there's about six feet 12 feet 18 and then a little extra to make it about 20. and i'm gonna bring it back in here these spools come with something that'll hold your line uh, tight to it so that it doesn't just flop around and come unspooled from its packaging. All right, so now I've got my 20 pound test fluorocarbon and 20 feet of it. I'm gonna wind this up and we're gonna get set up in our rigging station so I can uh, give you a fairly good look as to um, what knots I tie and how I put this goodness together. So to tie the mutton rig, these are the items you're gonna need. Um, I have my main line, which is attached to my reel over there. And I'm actually gonna do this, this whole setup because I wanna show you how to store the rig when you're done. So, main line, ounce and a half egg sinker, 3-0 octopus hook, looks like this. Got a shank that's bent back. Nice curved barb from the company Eagle Claw. And I've got a seven, size seven barrel swivel from Mustad. And then we've got the 20 feet of 20 pound test fluorocarbon. You're also gonna need a cutting tool. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to thread the sinker onto the weight. Give yourself plenty of length. So this is what we've got. You have a free floating sinker. You never want to tie a knot around your sinker. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tie on our swivel. We're using basic clinch knots with these. Um, if you don't know how to tie a clinch knot, uh, I'm gonna drop a card right here. You can go check out that video. It's a great simple tutorial. This is basically known as the, basics, uh, the basic fishing knot. It's very simple. So remember, when you tie a clinch knot, this has to be at a perfect 90 degree angle. If your knots ever look funny, and they don't look right and pretty, I suggest cutting them off and starting over from scratch. Because you, you, the last thing you want to do is lose a fish uh, due to a knot failure. Trim off your tag end. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do we're going to find one end of our 20 foot leader and we're going to tie that up to our swivel. And again, another basic clinch knot. The rig in itself is not too complicated. What is uh, fascinating about it is the fact that you have this 20 foot leader, which um, can seem, you know, daunting, but there is a way to store it and I'm gonna go over with that with you. Trim up this tag end. And now we are going to tie our hook, or I call it the business section of this rig, onto the other, the final end of our fluorocarbon leader. You want to use fluorocarbon because it basically disappears in water. It only ups your chance of getting a hookup. And again, one last clinch knot, and then we'll be done with uh, tying the rig, and then I'll go forward with um, this process. Trim off our tag end. Oops. Alright. So, that's basically it. Now I'm going to show you the next steps. Before we shift gears, I want to go over the bait that I use when I've been fishing for mutton snapper. I've been using strictly Spanish sardines. This is my generally horrible rendition of a sardine. I'm going to show you what I do to rig them up and a couple different little things you can do. All right, so the first thing is, is you'll have a sardine. You're going to want to take it so he doesn't spin in the water and you're going to want to trim off his tail. But when you trim it off, you don't want to trim off the entire thing. You want to leave some of the cartilage on. So when you trim his tail, it'll look like this and you're going to leave just a little bit of it on there. Don't trim it all the way off. <clears throat> Then you're going to take your hook and you're going to sink it 
right where the, the, the skin's gonna stop about here and the tail will start about here, you wanna put it right at where about the skin ends. It'll kind of go through the, uh, through the cartilage and through the, right where the, the, the tail and the skin begin. And you just sink your hook through it one time. And that's it. And you'll drag your bait, it'll sink down to the ocean floor and hopefully you're gonna get hit before it even hits the bottom. Now the idea is, is what's gonna happen is little fish might nibble away at it or they'll start chomping away, chomping away, and then they'll get all enticed. And by the time they get down to what would end up being a little nub of bait, they're gonna hit the whole thing and take off with it. Now, if you don't like using a large piece of bait, you're just gonna have to trust me on this one. Um, the evidence is in the videos. Go on ahead and check them out. You've, you've, you've seen in the last couple of episodes uh, from our Sunday showdowns, the mutton sapper that we've been caught in. This is the bait I've been using, the whole thing. Now, another thing you can do is you can do, use what's called a sardine plug. To make a sardine plug, what you wanna do is you wanna cut off the head just behind the gill. So right in front of the pectoral fin, you go and I make a diagonal cut and I remove its head and this, you end up with what is called a sardine plug. So the head goes in the water for the fish to eat, and this will drift down. That is the bait that I've been using to catch mutton snapper. This is my mutton snapper setup. I use it, this reel for trolling for everything. Very peculiar when, I, when it comes to uh, picking my setups um, that I use. So, this is an Accurate Fury 600 Narrow. Holds several, about 300 yards of 30 pound test clear monofilament. If I go with braid, I can probably get about six or 700 yards of it, but um, that's not what I'm shooting for. This rod, this is a star rod, the handcrafted series. It's seven feet tall. It has 10 guides on it. Uh, it's got lots of bend, lots of flex for shock absorbency for when a fish hits. So what I do, when I'm fishing for mutton snapper. I'm using a conventional reel, so my, uh, my line's going straight out. I'll put my reel in free spool. Line's gonna go out. I let my line all the way down to the bottom, and then I continuously keep letting line out. Don't ever stop letting line out, because then you'll start dragging your bait through the water, and that's gonna detract. You're not gonna get your target species if get any hookups. As soon as the fish hits, you set your drag, give it a little tug, and you start reeling up. Um, if you do not have a level wind guide on your reel, you're gonna have to guide your line back and forth as you're reeling in, so as to not um, unevenly wind on your line. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what you want to do to preserve the integrity of this 20 foot leader once you're done fishing with it. So what you can do is you're going to take your hook. You're going to hook it on the first guide backwards. You don't want to hook it up. You want to hook it down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our leader and just wrap it around the reel itself. If you do this backwards, it won't work. You want to start with the hook end first and then wrap, wrap it around your reel. And I'm going to show you why. So you wrap all 20 feet of it all around your reel. And this will sort of preserve, it'll keep it in a nice sort of round spool format as which it came off of originally. Oops. Now what you can do in the meantime is you can wind up some on your, on your reel and get your gather some line of your sinker towards your top of your guide. 
Now you continue wrapping, winding your leader on. Make sure you get out any wind twist. You don't want to pull against it. If you get a tangle in it, pull it away from itself. That way you don't twist it into a knot. And you pull it until you've almost got your line tight. So, you will have slack in it. As you can see, my sinker is down here. Now, to tighten up that slack and keep it so that it doesn't just pop off your reel, what you want to do is just wind it the rest of the way up. And then, voila, it won't come off while you're traveling to your destination or anything. You're not putting pressure on it so it's going to get any weird kinks or anything like that. This will preserve your line. That about does it for this episode. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed. Hopefully you've walked away from this with a little bit more knowledge on how you can target this species, being the mutton snapper, and come away rather successful. And just remember, all in all, first, you gotta have fun. If you're stressed out about it, it's gonna take away from the whole aspect of it. Next, just bear in mind also that it is called fishing. It is not called catching. Hope to see you next Tuesday for our Sunday showdown. Until next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.